I know what it did to me and I did not appreciate it. The devil's here. He wants you to have his baby. We need to call a priest. Oh, I know it's here and it goes wherever it wants, but I don't want it here anymore. I want to be done with this and I want to not be scratched or to be violated. That's what I want. You call on God and God is just like not listening. And that's why I called you guys because it's the devil himself. Can you give us a sign that you're in here? Who's up there? We heard you. My name is Josh Foreman, and these are my brothers, Rocky and Sean. As children, the three of us experienced a very dark and evil haunting. We have now set off on a journey across the country, helping families trapped in their own nightmares, filming and documenting some of the most shocking paranormal footage. Do it again for us right now. Whoa. Go, go, go. It's right there. That door slammed wide open. You know who we are, you know what we do. It all ends tonight. Woo. Manifest yourself. So we can see you. This is Paranormal Nightmare. I was recently contacted by a mother in Portland, Ohio, claiming something demonic has taken hold of her family. Recently, the mother has brought in other paranormal investigators and priests to investigate the home. Even a recent exorcism of the home has only increased the activity inside the house. My brothers and I have traveled out to Cortland, Ohio to see if we can document further evidence to help explain what's going on inside this house. This is where it growled three times after we saged. It did not like to sage. It started to rattle on the window like this. It was sealed off during the exorcism. Somehow it made its way back in and it started to walk around. A couple nights ago, it was down in the basement trying to get in through the windows. Mark moved here first, and then we came along shortly after. We had our first Halloween here. Everything was really good. We were excited. This was my first house in 14 years after the divorce. So we were really excited. Our first house, the kids get their own bedroom, and that part was fun. And things started to happen rather fast. Things walking down the hallway, nobody was there. Then I was doing dishes one day in the kitchen, turned around putting dishes away, and something lifted up my shirt and started to grab up my phone in my pocket, pull it out of my pocket. Then it started to get really serious and walk alongside my bed, touch me in my sleep, touch my thighs and rub its hands up along my legs and it would take my necklaces off when I would wear them. And then it would do other crazy things like lock me out of my house. So I then knew that we had a serious problem. Pounding on the on the house and, and just like loud pounds, not slight little like things are knocking up against it during a storm, loud pounds, like angry pounds. And then you would hear walking. I said, that's it, I'm going outside. And I go outside to take a breath and it started to bang or tap on the window where the roses had fell off. Then that's when I said, we need to get someone in here. That Friday night, they left. I was going in the back room to change in the bedroom, doing whatever, pick up, and it growled. It just like, and it sounded like a cat puking. It was like a, <laughs> like that, three times. I flipped turned the other way, I said, that's it. We need to call a priest. We called in a priest and he comes in, he does this little thing and then he goes down in the basement to use the restroom and he says, he goes, something growled at me. The priest took off, he said, pray for me. He was so freaked out that he never even had anything to do with us ever again. We have not heard from him. So after that, it escalated. Then it started to walk in front of me while I was on the couch sleeping. Then it started to tap louder on the windows because I had found holy water and I started sprinkling it on the windows. It didn't like that at all. It really banged on the windows then. It was like running around all the windows here, here, and in the kitchen. It just went around tapping and tapping. It really freaked me out a lot. So then I had to step it up. Where I had plan A, I had a plan B. I mean, I just, if someone didn't show up, I was right on the other end because I wanted this gone because I was afraid for my girls. My daughter had told me that something sat on her bed, on the edge of her bed, and I was freaking out. I was scared for them because you don't know what you're dealing with. It is, it's invisible. 
And it kind of wrecks your dream a little bit because you come into a house and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I finally made it. I survived. I got here. I got to a house. I got, I found love. I found all those things. And then you've got this invisible thing that you cannot fight. And you're not really scared because what you really are is mad. And you really want to give it a piece of your mind. But you hear all these stories that if you give it a piece of your mind, you can get hurt. But you're willing to take that risk because you are so angry at it. But the more I would yell at it, the more it would do things back. And it would raise its game. And every time you got really mad, like the last time when I got mad at it, it played with the deadbolt and almost locked me out of my house. This is where you're supposed to be protected. And this is where if everything out there is bad, you have one safe place to go. And it should not be that these invisible creatures are allowed to walk on this earth. And whatever they are, they shouldn't be allowed to be here. By God himself, I don't care. They just shouldn't be allowed to be here. We have enough to contend with as human beings that we don't need this invisible thing running around and just wreaking havoc. And I, I'm just really angry and that's why I called you guys because I have watched all the shows, I have took notes, and I have tried my best to do what they tell you to do, but I really hate to tell people it doesn't always work. You really need to find out what it is before you just start running around like a crazy woman and start burying things in the ground because you just don't know what it is. It's a scary thing because you just don't know what it is. Dead people, the devil himself, you really just don't know. It does scare you. And when I'm here alone, that's when it does it the worst. It does it when I'm all alone. Then you look like a crazy fool when you're trying to tell people your story because nobody really cares. I mean, it's not their life, it's your life. They don't care. The people that are out there living this kind of life because it's hard. You don't have the money to go find another house. You don't have the money or the means to fight it. And you call on God and God is just like not listening. So you get really aggravated. You get aggravated at the religion. You get aggravated at God when you shouldn't be, but he is the only one that has the power to take it away. So you get really frustrated. Fight with something so invisible. And if we beg for help and we run around with the cross around our neck and we sleep with the cross and, and you know, it's stealing the cross from your hand. If it has the power to do that and laugh in your face, it makes you fearful that maybe God is not strong enough to get rid of it, but if he is the creator of everything, he should have the power to get rid of it, even if it is the devil. But it just doesn't seem to be working out that way. And if he's gonna put that kind of life here for, the, for us to fight, then if we're smart enough to ask for help from him, he should be kind enough to listen. You know as a human that there is disease and there is cancer and, you know, being poor, not having a place to live, or you're going to fail at love. You know there's those disasters out there, a car wreck. You know they're there. But this, this invisible thing, nobody knows anything about it. There's no handbook anywhere in the world that you can you, can, you open up and, and tell you how to deal with this. There's not a phone book of people who you can call. You, so there have been so many quacks in this house with so many stories. I mean, I think one of the stories was... The, the, the devil's here by the name of, and I won't say his name, um, the Ouija board devil, I won't say his name, he wants you to have his baby. That's insane to me. I heard that story that it wanted me to have its baby. I just about lost it. I just about went, what? That's in my house? Are you kidding me right now? We got to get home. The girls are there alone. We cannot have that there. But you know it's there. Just because you can't call it, see it, and profile it with a picture, you know there's something there. But just what do you do? You know, people just aren't available to help you. We don't have time for this. We got to get someone out here now. <laughs> and it's just, as, as a mother, you want to protect your children. I know what it did to me. And I did not appreciate it. I did not appreciate it being afraid in my own house, living on my couch. So I know it's here and it goes wherever it wants. But I don't want it here anymore. I don't want it here. With Carrie's experiences becoming sexual in nature, it is even more important now for my brothers and I to figure out what's going on inside this house and why it is attacking Carrie. Three weeks after we lived here, everybody was at school and work. And I was putting away the dishes, turned around facing the window, doing my own thing. I was bent over lifting something out of the dishwasher and standing at the sink. And it lifted up the back of my shirt Something started to drag its hand up along my leg and then up along my thigh. 
And then I could feel it standing over me like this. And then I just started to freak out. And then that's when I knew it absolutely was targeting me. And I was very upset because I know what I felt. And when you feel a little violated, you know, you could live through that thing, like what it feels like, the conflict in this house right now. They'll see. That's all I have to say. One day, they'll see. It'll happen. So you've had a priest in here, and then you've had another paranormal group in here. Yes. And was the other paranormal group able to find anything? They didn't even research. What they did is they just ran around with a pot of coal, and I think it was frankincense, something in a pot, and he had a cross a big cross that he would lay here and there in every room he did a prayer. There was a prayer for the living room, a prayer for the kitchen, a prayer for the bedroom. It felt like it worked, but then that evening it got in and it got in over here and he told me some crazy story about what it was and what was here and I couldn't believe it. I don't know where he would have pulled the story from. He, he believed that what was here um, the angels were called down by the medium he was using that lived in New York. And the medium called down the angels and they took it away. They took whatever was here away. It was the, a demon. And then they, four others showed up. Three other things showed up. And they, they came again. They took rid of the, got rid of those and they closed the tunnel they were coming through. There's a tunnel that runs on this side of the road, they said, that all these things are coming through. There's a tunnel. And they said that the angels closed the tunnel and they took all the things away. And I'm sitting here going, but there's still this one that remains that continues to walk on the roof. And it, it, it doesn't really walk, but it bounces. And wherever I'm at, it will go. If I'm there in the living room, it will be there. If I come into the kitchen, then it'll bounce over to the kitchen. And wherever I am, it'll just bounce too. But I'm tired of ignoring it because I feel like I can't paint, I can't remodel. I just sit in my little corner in my living room because I don't know what it's capable of. And that's what you're afraid of. You're not exactly sure what its capabilities are. You know, you, you it does things, but you're just not sure what more it can do. It's mostly walking, banging, busting things. It took a snowman, a ceramic snow, snowman downstairs. It threw it, smashed it into a million pieces. The growling, it, done, it did that. It also gurgled in the bedroom. Maybe two days after the saging, after it, it um, did its growling, it gurgled. It sounded like, almost like somebody was hanging themselves. They couldn't quite speak. And then that's when I started to do the research on the house, found out the second owners possibly had their son who committed suicide. I mean, I just think it'll do what it wants when it wants to. That's my theory. But reputable is, you know, who you have to call, and that's why you guys are here. We played with the Ouija board, Parker Brothers game. You ask it silly questions. So the big thing tonight is you want answers to help validate you know, hard, solid proof that you can show that, yes, there is something here. Yes, I want it gone. We have tried blessing, saging, exorcism, mediums, Reiki masters. We have tried it all. And when she did try to Reiki me in this house, the oddest thing that happened that I couldn't take it anymore is whatever it was, was whispering in my ear some kind of Latin, broken English. I, it didn't, they weren't even words that made any sense. It was just in my ear going And I said, that's it. We can't, we can't do it in here. We just can't. Are you afraid to be in this house? I'm not happy with it taking and lifting my shirt up and touching my legs, but I make sure that I sleep with pants on now. I just have to make it a little impossible for it to do something to me. So I've done all the research I could on this, this area, the property, who lived here, and the closest I could come to was a suicide. Through our research, we were unable to track down any suicides taking place inside this house. It has also been reported that the previous owners were also experiencing activity inside the house. They said they heard walking and scratching um, on, in the walls. And when we did look at this house with the realtor, I remember we heard, I heard scratching down on the 4A on the wall three times. And uh, the realtor got so scared, he said, let's just get out of here. So we got out. I did not take it as a sign. I was hopeful that I said, you know, it's just all ghost stories. You know, you see what's on TV. You think it's all made up. 
it's not. It's not. I tried to laugh it off, but it definitely was sending a sign. Like it's sending a message. And I should have took that as a sign. But we were pushed to move here. We were pushed to take this house. It was the only house in Cortland available. I want to be done with this. And I want to not be afraid to put paint on the walls or have something stolen or to be scratched or to be violated. That's what I want. I don't, I don't, I don't want to constantly wait for it to get worse. And that's the fear you live with because it could get worse. You're not afraid of what's here. You're afraid of what it could do. You're not afraid of what it's doing, just what it could do. That's what you're afraid of. He's lifting up my shirt. He's throwing things. He's locking me out of the house. I mean, that's, that's kind of bad. I mean, how could you not say that it's not mean or menacing? Sexually, you know, it's doing things that aren't right. I mean, it's one thing if you're gonna throw something, it's another thing if you want to touch me, okay? It's just, you're not allowed to do that. And it was getting up at three in the morning on the dot and shaking the door handles and rattling them, something fierce. And that's the hardest part that a homeowner has is trying to contact a man of God to come in and, and bless the house and, and hear your story. And they don't want to. When I was coming down the hallway one evening, it started to growl. That's when I knew it was something. It happened right after I sage. I ran back to the end of the hallway and then that was it. I did not come to back here. I wouldn't even sleep back in this room that night. This room is the scariest one to sleep in. This room gets very cold. It is the coldest room in the house, absolutely, even at night. She's like got three layers of shirts on, two pairs of winter socks. She comes out of here and I'm like, what are you doing? She goes, it's really cold in here. We've moved the bed around for her. This is by far the coldest room in the house and the darkest room. I don't like it in here at all. This room here is where he was gurgling probably two weeks after we saged. He was in here and I was going in here to comb my hair and it was gurgling here. And I remember hollering out to the girls, did you guys make a noise? Did you guys do something? Are the cats throwing up? They're like, no, nothing's going on. And that's when I was like, okay, I'm out of here. It was standing probably right here. And then I was just, I was gone. Then I went outside to kind of get my head together. That's when it started to do this on the window the bathroom. We're in the middle of the night, probably about midnight, where the shower curtain was pulled off. It was totally pulled down and the, and the towel was pulled off of its rack. The towel rack just yanked it right off. The room where I was laying on this side of the bed here and it came walking along. Malcolm was here, the dog, and Mark was here and I was sleeping alongside where the closet was. It was walking alongside and just doing this along my leg. And then it started to play with my feet. It began at the feet, then it went up to the leg. But it was, it was enough that got me like out of the room, like out of the bed. That's enough of that. So right above in the closet there is where the attic is. This is very noisy, these stairs. That's how you can tell when it walks. We had a larger snowman like this. He was bigger. He's probably about like this. This is ceramic. This is what was thrown on the ground. And the other night, this is, this is the window that seems to have a lot of activity. This right here one night, this was before the speaker was here, but this, and this is pretty heavy. This would, I found, knocked over onto the table. The lamp was knocked off. Everything on that table was knocked off. At the time, we did not have these here, but it was just the picture, lamp, a few things scattered. And that was knocked over full force. After seeing that, we knew it had some energy to be able to move these heavy objects. So we're not sure if he tried to get in through here, but this is a very active area. I was sweeping the floor up along here and I had turned around and done over in the corner and I turned back around and this card was right here, Cards Against Humanity card. It's a game that the kids play now, really popular. Um, it was on the floor. I picked it up and the card said, if I remember right, leave things as they are. And after that moment when it dropped the card and then it started to get physical. Then it started with the touching and the rubbing and the doing different things that it did. I mean, lifting up the shirt. 
in there is where it pulled out the cord for the dryer. This is another creepy area. And this is the cord that it yanked out right in front of me. This takes a lot of, I felt, energy. And that's how I got a little scared because I thought, my God, if it can do that right in front of your eyes. I mean, it had to have been standing right next to me. So I, I flipped out and ran away. I did. I, I will admit I ran. I had enough of that. All you, your mind does is race, like all the possibilities, all the scenarios, and you're experiencing all this stuff, and you actually know what these people feel like in the scenarios of this stuff happening. It is the most scariest thing you could possibly ever imagine. I didn't even want to come back to this house ever after I'd leave it and go to gro get groceries and come back, because every time you'd come back, there'd be something thrown, something busted. If there's anybody inside this house with us, we're here tonight to communicate with you. Can you let us know you're here? Carrie said that you bang on the roof. Can you do that for us? Where'd it come from? If you're in this room, can you let us know you're in here with us? Did you die inside this house? Why are you touching Carrie inappropriately? If there's any spirits inside this house, you're going to have to do something to let us know you're here to validate that you're here with us. My name's Josh. This is Rocky and Sean. Can you come in here and talk with us? They say that they hear you up on the roof. If you're on the roof, let us know. Tell us that. Was that you? What the hell is that? Is that like growling or something? Yeah. Are you trapped outside trying to get inside this house? It's okay to communicate with us. We just want to speak with you. But it keeps feeling like something's behind me. Are you behind Sean? You can touch Carrie. Can you touch one of us? What the hell? What? Holy what? The drumstick just fell. Where? Right there on the damn floor. Right when I was over here. I didn't see it. It's right there on the freaking floor. But I was walking over here. What the hell? What the hell? Did you move that drumstick? They say that you move stuff around the house. You break things. Walking. Whoa, did you hear that? Walking. Whoa, did you hear that? Walking. That's twice. This came from like this hole. I kept feeling like something was freaking behind me. Where are you inside this house?
that room behind you. Come into this hallway. Can you do something super loud for us? Are you attached to this property? If you need help, we can help you tonight. Do you need help crossing over? We're down in the basement now. They say that you do all kinds of stuff down here. Knock on these windows. They heard growling, a hissing sound. Are you down here with us? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Who's up there? We heard you. Shh. Where's that alarm keep going? If you're up there, come down to the basement with us. We can hear you. Carrie said that she was touched in this room. Did you come in here and touch Carrie? I know that's water, but it's not like a voice came out of it. Yeah. Well, that's that's what I thought. I did too. I was like, oh my god, that's freaking strange. Are you inside this house or are you outside this house? If you're outside the house, knock on one of these windows for us. After further inspection of this room, we figured out that the loud noise was caused by the sub pump and not paranormal activity. We got a device here that you can communicate with us. Did you die inside this house? Yes or no? What is your name? How did you die? Are you a man or a woman? Did you live in this house at one point? Who's the female that keeps talking to us? Are you the one touching Carrie? I can say yes. Are you a man or a woman? Woman. Why is that thing going nuts and then something?
Are you up here? Nobody is down there. Who's up there right now? Banging. I thought there was a fucking voice. Dude, someone's walking. Hey, move. Holy Just stay right up here for a second. Where are you at? Come up to me right now. We can hear you. We want you to do something big and validate to us that you're in here right now. Did you hear that? I hear you banging on something. Can you bang again? Do you hear a male voice? We know you're in here, we can hear you. Why are you here? What do you want? I think it's being on here right now. Oh. Let's see if he'll come out and touch me. Can you touch Rocky? He's walking behind me. Can you walk up to me and touch me? How come you like touching girls, but you don't want to touch a guy? Can you go up and touch Sean? Feels like something just grabbed this, touch this cord. It was like right here on my wrist, yeah. on my hand, and you felt something like pull it like that. Like that right there. Yeah. Well, she said that he'll pull her necklace and stuff. Are you pulled on Carrie's necklace? Guys! There's something on the freaking roof right now, or... Did you hear it? Yeah, you hear freaking walking. Guys! Are you on the roof? Why are you on the roof? It's like you go downstairs, it happens upstairs, you come upstairs, it happens downstairs. Are you afraid of us? Did you just hear that? Are you afraid of us? Did you just hear that? Are you afraid of us? Did you just hear that? Who are you? Tell us your name. You hear music? Yeah, it sounds like an ice cream truck. That's creepy. They got an ice cream truck outside, Sean? He's got the creepiest shot of the ice cream truck. My name's Sean, can you tell me yours? What was that? Whoa. That sounded like it came from that other bedroom, didn't it? Whoever's in this house, come in here with me right now. I give you permission to talk to me. You've had a lot of people come see you. Give me a sign if you're in here with me. Hear that 
thump. There's that thump again. Can you tell where that's coming from out there, Josh? I feel like it's coming from the attic. Kind of like almost walking. Mm -hmm. Let's go open that attic thing. What the hell was that? Do you want to take that? Oh, she's got it. Are you up here? We can hear you banging. Show yourself. I hear a man. Right here. Oh. What is your name? I heard you talking. There's a box right there behind me. Can you move the box please? Something's walking. Where'd you go? Yeah, I could hear voices like they're right there next to you. I mean, it's plain as day talking. I know we could hear We could hear the walking, then I started hearing out in the hallway. Okay, I'm gonna leave this light bulb up here. You hear something walking? Yeah. Right above me on the roof. I'm gonna leave a can't something just flew right by me. I'm gonna leave a can't something just flew right by me. I'm gonna leave a can't something just flew right by me. Do you need help? Where are you at right now? Come show yourself to me. If you can touch people, can you please touch me? We know you're here. So that means you're down here with me or you're up in the attic. Holy shit, there was just a shadow. I swear I just seen something. What the hell? And I swear it looked like it jetted, like right, but I mean, I was staying still, and it looked like it jetted right into this freaking room right here. Can you tap on these drums, make a noise for me? Yeah, that freaking closet right there behind you, Josh. I swear that's where I seen something go into. You don't have to be scared of us. If you're up in the attic, please come down here. You was talking to Josh. Me and Rocky heard you. You don't want to touch one of us, just tap on something. Was that you? Was that you? 
Was Josh talking to you up in the attic? Are you up in the attic? Tell me your name. What do you want with Terry? Do you have a problem with her being with Mark? Did you guys hear that? Sound like footsteps. Whoa. I just heard something say yes, but it wasn't through this. It was up there. Are you in the attic right now? Are you in the attic right now? Ow. What the f was that? What the hell did it say? What the f What the f You up here? You up here? You up here? What's your name? I got this device you can talk through. What's your name? Nobody's here to hurt you. Oh, Jesus Christ. What the hell was that? Okay. Oh, crap. Somebody is talking to you. And it does sound like, uh, not a real old guy, but just kind of, I don't know, maybe our age or something, or maybe a tad bit There's younger. Somebody yeah, somebody's out there. After our investigation of the home, my brothers and I have decided to move forward with the cleansing. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may the angels of heaven be sent forth to protect us. We come in the name of Jesus, under his authority and under his blood. We close all entryways and doorways inside this house to any evil or demonic spirits inside this house. In the name of Jesus, we command you to leave now. It is Jesus who has authority over this house. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I command you to leave now. We call on the Holy Spirit to come inside this house. Fill this darkness with the light of the Holy Spirit. Let there be no dark place for the evil ones to hide. Any spirits inside this attic, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ, leave this attic now. We seal off this attic, sign of the cross and the blood of Jesus Christ. Any and all spirits dwelling in this attic, you must leave now. You can no longer physically touch or assault carry. We seal off all entryways, doorways, and portals inside this house. I command that you stop all evil activities and attacks inside this house. We seal off these walls and windows, the sign of the cross and the blood of Jesus Christ. You must leave this room, you're forever banished. Even though we are unable to document evidence of demonic activity taking place inside this house, we feel, given our personal experiences and the documented evidence, something has either attached itself to Carrie or something attached to the land is causing this activity. The family is now considering moving out of the house once they find a new home.